Joining me now is a UFC middleweight fighter who headlines UFC Fight Night 125 on February 3rd against former UFC light heavyweight champion Leoto the Dragon Machida in Belém, Brazil. It is Eric Anders here on the program for the very first time. Eric, how's it going? Thanks for the time. Man, it's my pleasure, brother. Um, so this is obviously a huge opportunity for you, and funny enough, you called out Lito Machida after your, your last fight. Got the job done, got a decision win, second fight, 2-0 in the UFC, and you called out Lito Machida. A lot of people, I, I it seemed to me, at least on social media, a lot of people felt like, hey, this was sort of just a shot in the dark, good trying, but you're not going to get the fight. But lo and behold, not that, you know, a few days later, it's booked. Were you surprised when you called him out? Were you were you treating this as a legitimate call out? Did you think there was a good chance you would get the fight? Um, you never know with these kind of things, but at the same time, if if you don't roll the dice, then you know uh, you know fortune favors the bold. So you know, I decided to take my uh, you know my little half court jumper and uh, you know swoosh. Why did you want to fight him? Um, man, you know, uh, I want I want fight internationally you know uh, i like hostile environments and what more hostile environment is there in the mma world than brazil you know people you know telling you you're gonna die on your way to the cage and you know he's from there so i'm sure they'll be extra amped up so you know i'm just uh looking forward to the opportunity so is this more so just about being on the blem brazil card more so than fighting machida or is it a mix of both uh, it's a mix of both. You know, he's from there, and, uh, you know, they're heading there. He didn't have an opponent, so, you know, uh, you know, just wanted to see what, the, what he had going on on February 3rd. And I guess even though you wanted to fight in Brazil, say fighting in unranked middleweight, who's maybe a couple, you know, a couple fights in the UFC like yourself in Brazil, opposed to fighting Machida, you're better off with the Machida fight. Obviously, it's a huge opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. You know, if they offer me a, you know, a guy in the top fifteen, of course, you know that's that's the guy we want. Yeah. So you have no concerns, or or do you have a, a few concerns about fighting in Brazil? Not necessarily the hostile environment. I mean, the fans can say what they want. Um, a lot of fighters are able to deal with that and not really let let that get to them mentally. But also, just sort of being there for the first time, sort of fight week can be a little chaotic in a new place. Finding weight cutting supplies, finding food, finding just just fight week stuff. It, it are you concerned, or is it going to go smooth as far as you can tell? Um, man, I don't have a clue, but, it, you know, I don't know how it's going to go, you know, but at the same time, you know, it's not something that, uh, you know, I'm worrying about or I'm concerned about, you know, it is what it is and, you know, uh, it, it's going to be that. So, you know, I'm cool, you know, we'll figure it out and make it happen. As long as you make it to the arena that Saturday night, that's all that really counts. That's it, you know, and, uh, you know, I definitely plan on getting the job done in devastating fashion and coming out of there with my hand raised. So when you got the call so soon after the your your second fight uh, a month or so back, um, do you remember what your immediate reaction was exactly? Like, you, did you get the call from Mick Maynard, and what what did you say to him? What was your reaction? Yeah, you know, uh, my manager, Jason House, with Iridium Sports, he called me and said, hey, they accepted the fight. Um, well, actually, at first, he, yeah, now he, when he called me and said he accepted the fight, you know, my initial reaction was cool. You know, send the contract and let's get to work. Okay. Um. You you said your initial reaction. Did you sort of did it? Did you let it sink in, or was it literally just okay? That that's what I wanted. Now let's go train. Did you have any sort of like I don't know? Just just the way you sort of said that, it seemed like you weren't super excited. But I gotta imagine you were. No, absolutely. You know, uh, I, the whole point of getting into the sport is to make it to the top. You know, uh, Leoto certainly. Uh, ranked higher than everybody else that I've fought so far. So, you know, this is an excellent opportunity for me to go out there, take out a legend, move my way up, and uh, take one step closer to the championship belt. Now, booking you versus Lyoto Machida, who's one of the best to ever do it in the light heavyweight division, in the middleweight division. He's fought for multiple titles. He's been the UFC 205-pound champ in the past. Um, he Again, he he's a legend, as you said, a future Hall of Famer. He's been there, done that. But that's the point. That's the thing. He's been there, done that. He's sort of on the way down. I think that's pretty fair to say. Do you think them booking you so soon against a legend like Machida shows that they see value in you and, and they want to push you? Do you? Is that all accurate? 
I believe so. You know, I think that they see that, you know, I come to fight. I like to put on entertaining fights. Uh, I'm looking for the finish. I'm not just looking to go out there and collect wins and paychecks, you know. Uh, I think I'm a marketable guy and, you know, a guy that, you know, they can put some uh, marketing and money behind. So, you know, I think this, I have a lot of upside in the eyes of the UFC. To you, I know you obviously don't count yourself out in any fight or, or in anything, but is it at all surprising how far you've come into the UFC in so little time? I mean, you made your debut in July of last year. We're talking just a half a year or so. You knocked out Hoffa Natal. Then in December, so a month ago, just over a month ago, you, you decisioned Marcus Perez, and now you're fighting again, a top contender, legend leo machida is it and not that long ago you won the lfa title not that long ago you weren't even here um in the ufc is it surprising how far you've come in so little time not at all you know i had like 25 amateur fights and you know only the people who you know train with me and you know training partners and people at the gym see how hard i work and the the work ethic and the you know um that i bring to the table so um, you know, it's not surprising to me at all how fast uh, I'm moving up the ranks. So you posted a picture a few days ago of you training with former UFC welterweight title challenger Stephen Wonderboy Thompson, and my immediate reaction was, oh, of course, this this makes all the sense in the world with you being booked to fight Lito Machida. As soon as you got the call to fight Machida, was your one of your first thoughts, I got to hit up Wonderboy? Yeah, you know, I've, tra- I've trained with him in the past, and, you know, um, he has a similar but different style than Machida. You know, I think he's uh, younger and more explosive. Um, he, You know, he possesses better attributes uh, that, uh, than Lyoto Machida, you know. Uh, he's certainly not in his prime anymore. So, you know, going out there and seeing that kind of speed and that look that, that Wonderboy was able to provide for me, uh, I think was invaluable to my training. How did that all come together? I know you mentioned you've trained with him in the past, so was it just a matter of sending him a message and, and asking him asking him to come out? Or yeah, I actually went to him. You okay. know, uh, you know that's that's you know he he's a, he's a superstar, man. I'm just uh you know trying to get where he's at. So you know I hit him up, said if it was cool if I can come down and work with him and Carl Reed uh, for a week or so, and uh, you know he said you know for sure anytime you want him and his dad uh, Ray Thompson. So, you know, went out there, got the looks, and, uh, you know, came back home. So you were there for about seven days, you said? Yeah. Do you want to go back, or is that just not really in the schedule? As far um, as before it's this not fight. really in the schedule. Okay. Yeah, you know, we're honing in on the game plan right now. I'm putting on, you know, dotting, dotting the I's and crossing the T's, and, the, you know, we get on the plane next Friday. So it's not really a whole lot of time to, uh, you know, do a lot of traveling and whatnot. Sure. Um, Thompson, though, is a guy who, although different than Machida, if anybody's able to replicate uh, Lito Machida's stance and style, it's probably Stephen Wonderboy Thompson. So, obviously, a great move to be training with him. Uh, what were your thoughts on, on training with him and also just the idea that how much has this uh, sort of allowed you to prepare for Machida? Without, if you didn't you know, train with Wonderboy for a week, how much less prepared for Machida style do you think you would be? Um, you know, I got plenty of guys in the gym who uh, are, are are excellent at mimicking uh, my opponents and kind of trying to do what they do. Um, but you know, when you have a guy who's you know trying to do it for a, for a month or so versus a guy who's been doing it his whole life, you know, if, if you have the opportunity to get a look from the guy who's been doing it his whole life, you know, uh, that's probably the guy you want to work with for a little bit. Interesting. Um, do you? I, I guess there would be no plans of training with him afterwards, because a uh, different opponent not necessarily required. Or would you like? Did you bond quite well with Stephen in that you might want to train with him a bit more regularly? Just, just you know, just as a good training partner. No, Wonderboy is my dog, man. You know, we get along great. You know, we're really good friends. So, you know, um, I, I, I want to get up there and train with him as much as possible. Awesome. Where do you think a win over Lyoto puts you in the division? And I think there's two things to consider. A, of course, he has a big name. That, that's never going away. We've talked about what he's done in the UFC and other organizations. He's accomplished a lot. But also, as you talked about, and it's, everybody knows it, he's on the way out. He, he's declining. He's not, he, you know, he's not in his prime. And I don't even think it's really close anymore. 
Um, if this was 2014 Machida, it's a little different, but we're in 2018 now. Where do you feel, considering both of that, uh, where do you think a win over him puts you in the division? Um, I'm not sure uh, exactly where it's going to put me, but I do think that it will add some legit- legitimacy to my name. I think a lot of guys and a lot of fans think I'm just kind of like a flash in the pan or you know, just getting a lot, a lot of hype because I played football for uh, the University of Alabama, but um, what they will soon realize is that I'm for real about this and I will be uh, in title contention by the end of 2018. Well, that's what I was going to ask you. I mean, we talked about you going from winning the LFA middleweight title in June of last year, defeating Brendan Allen, unanimous decision, good performance, then going on to knock out Natal, then beating you know Perez by decision just last month. Do we, like, is there any chance, as long as you stay healthy and active, like, you, you're going to be right up there. As long as you, you, you get the job done February 3rd, maybe get another win. Like, we, is there a chance we could see you fighting for the title end of 2018, early 2019? Is that realistic, do you think? I think so, you know, especially if I get to fight as often as I'd like, you know. Um, you know you really Which is can. how often? You know. Uh, you know, I like fighting about every other month, you know, you know, four or five times a year. Uh, I think I fought four times last year, so I'd like to at least do that this year. Um, and then, you know, obviously, you know, the guys are going to get tougher. The quality of opponents are going to get tougher. So, you know, I've been very fortunate not to, uh, you know, get, you know, injured during my training. So, you know, hopefully we keep on, on that path and, uh, you know, work my way up the ranks in 2018. Now, I saw the other day after the news of Yoel Romero uh, filling in to fight Luke Rockhold when Re- Robert Whitaker, the middleweight champion, got injured. You threw out a tweet because David Branch is now left without an opponent for uh, February 24th, I believe it is, UFC on Fox 28 on, in Orlando. You said, so this is three weeks after uh, after your fight against Machida, which is coming up in just over two weeks, that you'd be willing to fight uh, Branch. You get the job done against Machida and then go in there and fight Branch on three weeks' notice. How serious are you about that? I'm very serious. You know, I made my UFC debut on t- 10 days' notice, uh, you know, less than a month after fighting a five-round fight for that LFA title. So I know I'm capable um, of doing so. So, you know, uh, I'll be good to go and uh, ready to fight David Branch should he accept the, uh, accept the fight. You tagged matchmaker Mick Maynard in that Twitter post. I'm curious to see, did he respond to you? Whether you know, I know he didn't, I don't think on Twitter, but you know, did he send you a text and mention it? I know, of course, he can't book you to fight because you're fighting Machida. They can't book you for two fights at the same time. But did he sort of say, like, hey, get the job done, the, the fight's yours? Or give you any hints at all, or no? No, there hasn't been any contact with, uh, with Mick about that. But, you know, I think if I go out there and handle business, um, February 3rd, you know, especially early in the first round or, you know, you know, it's, it's without it, if, as long as I don't have any injuries, I'll be good right. to go. Uh, you know, I definitely want that fight. Do you plan on calling him out? Get the job done against Machida on February 3rd. Do you get on that post fight interview, get the microphone and call out David Branch for, for three weeks from then? Or have you even thought about that? No, I mean, we'll see, you know, what develops, you know, a lot can happen between now and then. So they may find him an opponent or, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see what the landscape looks like uh, from February 3rd. I, I was looking at your Twitter and I, I saw a tweet responding to an article about uh, the California State Athletic Commission, their 10-point weight-cutting plan, and you just put... CSAC, California State Athletic Commission, and the emoji for the thumbs down. I'm curious, you, you clearly aren't a fan of, of the California Commission. I'm, I'm curious why. Um, man, just because man, I think they're trying to do too much, you know. They, uh, when I fought there in Fresno, you know, for, first of all, they, they, you know, they, tried, they called me um, and let me FaceTime them, FaceTime them um, the week of the fight to check my weight. Um, and, you know, they said I was too heavy. I forget what I weigh, but, you know, I also water load. So I drink two or three gallons of water a day. So I'm literally 16 pounds heavier uh, than what, I'm, what I really weigh. You know, I'm, I'm waterlogged, you know. So when I get off the plane, my phone rings, and they're like, hey, we want you to fight. And this is the week of the fight. You know, I just got off the plane, landed in Fresno. Uh, my manager calls me and says, hey, they said you're too heavy. Uh, I can't remember the guy's name that uh, Trevin Giles fought. Um, so they want you to fight him now. And I was like, man, no. 
<laughs> I've been training for this guy. This is the guy I'm going to fight. So, you know, they try to create a, a whole, this whole hoopla about, you know, uh, how much weight I was cutting and this, that, and the third. And, you know, so, you know, I had to constantly send them videos and, and pictures of me getting on the scale and whatnot, and, you know, every day and whatnot, just, just so that I could fight uh, the opponent I was supposed to fight. So, you know, I just didn't appreciate all the extra, you know, nonsense, you know, and trying to switch my opponent the week of the fight for no reason. You know, everybody showed up, everybody made weight. So, you know, I, I just think that they need to, you know, not really try to tell people who's going to fight who. That's up to the promotion. We agreed to fight this weight. Let's fight it this weight, you know, whatever. So, you know, I think they're just kind of sticking their nose, getting too involved. So, Trevin Giles defeated Antonio Braganado on that same card in Fresno yeah. last month. So, they wanted you to, instead of fighting Marcus Perez, fighting Neto? Yeah. They try, they try to switch uh, Perez and Neto and have Trevin Giles fight uh, Perez and me fight Neto because Neto was a bigger middleweight and Perez was a smaller middleweight. And I was like, what are you talking about? It doesn't even make sense. No. <laughs> yeah, I, I that's that's strange. Um, I think like we look on the prelim card, they had Alex Perez versus Carl John Thomas. Similar situation in the sense that John Thomas he missed weight in his UFC debut last year, and now he uh, apparently during fight week was heavy as well. And then they ended up just moving that up to one thirty five. Perez accepted it. Alex Perez that was. I'm wondering, do you have any idea why they didn't just try and do that with your fight, say, fight at 195 or something, instead of trying to switch switch the opponents around? Because that's, like, I, I to me, I like a lot of what California is doing. I know we disagree, but that's, that's fine. But trying to switch around the opponent's fight week, that that's a little too far. I, I agree with that. Yeah, so, you know, um, I'm a middleweight. I'm going to fight at middleweight. I haven't missed weight. So I don't understand what the what the issue was. I have no strikes. You know, the other guy, the uh, the, the guy who fought Alex Perez, he already had a strike. And that dude was like 25 pounds. I watched him get on the scale. I watched that dude get on the scale. Um, I think we got there on Tuesday. I think on Wednesday, you know, that guy was like 25 pounds overweight, over, over his weight. And he's a little dude. I'm a bigger guy. So I can cut, you know, that much weight. But, you know, it's a little bit hard for smaller guys. So I... You know, I, I knew that guy wasn't going to make weight, but, you know, uh, that's on him, and I don't think it should affect uh, everybody across the board. Did they try and get you to take this fight at 195 instead, or did they just go right to trying to switch the opponents? Um, I, no, I don't think that they – no, nah, they didn't say anything about weight. They just wanted me to switch uh, switch opponents. Maybe they did say I – can't, I can't remember if they wanted me to fight up in weight, or I just remember them trying to make me, trying to get me to switch opponents. Okay, very bizarre. Well, luckily that you know you you shut the California Commission down. You said Eric Anders is boss, and uh, of course ended up fighting Perez anyways. Um, well, Eric, it's been a pleasure to talk, to talk to you. Um, really do appreciate the time. My last question for you: UFC Fight Night One Twenty Five. You're taking on Liero D- the Dragon Machida in the main event, February third, Belém, Brazil. How do you get the job done? Uh, I believe that I knock out or TKO Liotta Machida. Awesome. Eric, thank you very much for the time. Once again, really do appreciate it, especially just two and a half weeks or so out from the fight. Before I, before I let you go, let my audience know where they can find you on social media and if there's anybody you would like to thank or give a shout-out to, the floor is yours. Hey, appreciate it, man. You guys can find me on Twitter and Instagram, uh, at, at Eric Anders, E-R-Y-K-A-N-D-E-R-S. Um, Facebook, Eric Anders MMA. I want to thank everybody at Spartan Fitness, all my training partners, my coaches, uh, for helping me get ready for this fight and uh, uh, infinite CBD um, and grunt style, try one cryotherapy and EW motion therapy.